we have talked about building your presentation, about going from framework to outline to designing your perfect slides. And now we're going to take you through the process of practicing and delivering your talk. Your connection with your audience, it's probably the most important component. I don't know how many times I've gone to a talk and after one, someone will be like, oh, so what are they talking about? I'm like, oh, God, I, I, I don't actually know. Fundamentally, I think a good talk is really clear, like it's conveying their, their scientific message in a way that I can remember. This is the talk that I saw and here's the cool science that I learned. A good talk is one where you're with the person the whole time. I think of my scientific talks as conversations with my audience talking about your excitement, talking about your failures. Jokes, anecdotes, you can joke about all the experimental design mistakes you made. People like hearing that you're human. I like to ask questions of, of my audience throughout a talk. Sometimes I ask questions to kind of perk their attention. Sometimes I ask questions to see, are they following me? Are they understanding? And I not only pay attention to the verbal responses, but I also pay attention to their nonverbal cues. Are you with me? Is, is everything clear? Mm, is there something that I can make clearer? I try and do a little bit of jargon checking no matter who I'm speaking to. Jargon refers to these technical terms that scientists from a certain field use, and these terms are not understandable for scientists from a different field, for example. So when I first started graduate school, I was at a, a happy hour with a whole bunch of other graduate students from economics, social sciences, all these other fields that I didn't really know at all. Um, and they just kept talking about, um, about theories, about super wicked problems and Foucault. Mm. Later on, I like went to the library and like looked up what they were talking about. I realized like they weren't talking about anything all that technical or complicated. They were they were talking about why society has some some basic systematic problems. And if we had just sort of started with that kind of language, then I I feel like I would have had something to contribute, and I cer certainly would have understood what was going on. If I'm going to use a really technical term, I'll always ask myself. Is this necessary? Say that you're talking about a gene that you're studying. Sometimes you can't avoid using the name of that gene, but then really explain why that is important, what that gene is, what that gene does, making sure that people have all of the information available so that they can follow your talk. Some of the best speakers and lecturers that I've, I've ever seen were, were able to communicate what they did to you know, an audience of their peers, but also like their kids in elementary school. Repetition is a really good technique to remind your audience the bigger picture. You know why you're doing the research that you're doing. What are the broader implications? When I was an undergrad, Carolyn Bertozzi had been invited out to speak. She was well known, she was just like, I had read her papers, and so I was really excited to see it. And I was just blown away by her ability to give an amazing talk. And one of the things that was very clear to me was the fact that she had actually repeated her sort of core message throughout, like at the beginning, the middle, and the end. And so, like, unless you had been asleep, there was no way you could miss, like, her take home. Using analogies is the art of using comparison in order to clarify a complex scientific process. We had a, a very talented young scientist um, give a talk about her basic research project, how um, cells can sense pheromones from other yeast cells. It's called gradient tracking, which is a bit of a jargony term. Your friend is baking cookies. Now, you've never been in this house before, so you don't know where the kitchen is, but you can smell the cookies baking. So the first thing you're going to do is walk in and you're going to sniff and you're going to sniff and you're going to go in the direction where there's more cookie smell. 
So it turns out that the sperm and the white blood cells do exactly the same thing. Analogies can be incredibly helpful, but they're, they can also be tricky. Try it out on people and make sure that people understand it. See if using that particular analogy really conveys the idea about your research that you want it to convey. So if I'm sitting in the audience, uh, the talks that most appeal to me, the speaker is engaging with the audience. Talk to them instead of talk at them. This will help your audience be more engaged with what you're telling them.